Roadhouse. So excited about having these young ladies in the house with us, Maddie and Tay. Hello. Thank y'all so much for being here. Are you kidding? If yes. I would have told my younger self, hey, you're going to get to hang out with Tracy Lawrence, yeah. I would have died. Oh, yeah. my gosh. And you're... on your bus. This is really cool. I Thank know. You. It's got a cool vibe to it. You know, we've uh, we've done some taping in, in my pool house there when the bus has been at the shop or something, but it's yeah. it just doesn't have the warmth to me. I like the space. Yeah. There's something cool about the it's bus. It's cozy, yes. yeah. and it just, yeah. It's, it's been a work in progress. Trying to figure out where to put all the cameras, and and we just added a couple of new cameras. So oh we've kind of expanded. Gosh. We've grown a little bit since it's last year. Fancy. It is. I know. Yeah. I'm just impressed because this stuff is like really hard to do, and y'all have pulled it off all by yourselves. Like my yeah. God. Well, yeah. there's there's been a few phone calls to photographers, and we've had to learn. We've had, yeah. There's 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 been a couple of train wrecks along the way, <laughs> banners falling down, and you know, the oh, things, all the little things. Oh we, yes. we kind of figured it out. As we oh, go, but it's been good. Absolutely. So we met uh, Landon when. Is Landon still working for y'all? Landon, uh, I think, is that who introduced me to y'all? Who? Landon Blows? Yeah. Lighting? Lighting? Or was it, or was oh, it Scooter? Oh. Because we were at sure. a package show, and, I, and the first time that I met y'all, and one of the guys, somebody that used to work for me worked for y'all yeah. at that particular okay. time. Okay. But it's all, it all runs together. But it's been several years ago. I know. And, and y'all have done some amazing things in the last several years. Oh, when did you, you get signed? We got signed in 2014. 2014. Yeah. Yes. So it's been several years. Yes. And been you decade, just started yeah. your very first headlining tour last year? So we did a headlining tour back in 2015. 15. Yeah. Um, and then we just like were really, really blessed on like getting really great tour slots. So we didn't, yeah. we nurtured a little bit of the headlining stuff like overseas and stuff. Um, but then we got right back into headlining in 2020. Two, yeah. I think, yeah, twenty twenty two, and it fills our cup. We I love know. it. It's a lot. It's, it's, it is a so, lot. So, do y'all have investment. a package with you, or are you just going out playing theaters? What are y'all doing? We're doing like theaters, some clubs, um, and we have Anna Voss is our opener. She's actually an gotcha. incredible songwriter artist that, yeah. here in town. Um, yeah, and we're we're taking taking the babies with us. Oh, that's <laughs> a good thing. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's been it's wild because it's like you know. We toured last year while I was super pregnant and Tay had her baby girl. And it's like, I was nervous about touring with babies, but it's way more fun because, I mean, it's a lot, but, you know, during the day, you know, it's just so boring. And it's there's like, you can only, there's like yeah. three or four things that you can do. And then you're like, all right, well, what do I do for the other nine hours today? Yeah. <laughs> we had, when, when uh, my wife and I started our family, uh, we actually, uh, had the bunks taken out of one side on our coach and put a baby bed with a drop down latch on it and had our baby monitor and everything set yes. up so we could watch in the back. The whole thing was really padded and it was high so the kids couldn't get out. But our, our kids loved it. We we stayed on the road with them for about the first three or four years. Yeah. And then my girls got into competition dance and yes. that was all demanding. Yes. And so, so they you're were, a girl dad. I'm a dance dad. Yeah. Oh, I'm, dance I'm, dad. A, I'm a two girl dad. dad. Oh my gosh. I have, my oldest daughter is 22 and she is uh, finishing up her master's program at college and nutrition and dietetics. Oh, that's my what youngest, my husband did. Yeah. Well, he did food science with, yeah, mm -hmm. nutrition So she's, she's finishing up her internship right now. She graduates in May. Wow. My youngest daughter uh, will be 21 in April, and she is over in the UK right now taking some culinary classes, and she'll be back the 1st of March, and then she comes back on the road. She's been setting up drums and, and doing stuff on the stage and helping oh, out. Oh, my gosh. Cool. So, that is so, so They sound so awesome. <laughs> so are y'all are y'all sharing a bus with the babies? What are y'all? Surely you're not riding with all the band. Oh, heck no. Yeah. They That's stink. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They stink. They do for some reason. I don't they understand. Do stink. You know, I will say when we, when we, when like, we, it's like, it's like a bunch of guys. It's like living in a locker room. Oh, it and is. they don't pick up after themselves either. No. no. And especially in the summer, those like dusty, sandy festivals. Oh, and, and you're just woo. tracking mud everywhere. It's just a mess. And yeah. oh my gosh, the guys, um, so whenever we are on two buses, sometimes we roll one if we're not bringing the babies, but if we bring the babies, yeah. Then we'll roll like on our bus, and then the guys have theirs. But they're like, "Man, we miss the girls because they always have smell good stuff and pick up." And I'm like, <laughs> "I am not wipes. your mom. <laughs> like, I am your boss, actually. So pick up your damn cup and throw away your trash." Has that been a hard transition being a boss instead? Because um, I, I oh, mean, yeah. I, it's I found it hard to not be a friend and a running buddy all the time Absolutely. because it does make a difference. There's a little bit of separation. Not them, no, they're different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. I definitely, I feel like you've definitely struggled with that. Yeah. T is way better with like boundaries and like, you know, just, you know, 
no BS. Yeah. I sometimes like the water gets a little muddy for me because I just like want to, you know, yeah. be friends with everybody and yeah. have a relationship. And, you know, sometimes that's like a great thing for me because relationships are everything, yes. you know, but then sometimes there's like a line where yes. it's like, okay, you know, you're pouring so much into this person and they're just taking or, you know, where you just kind of have to. And luckily for us, like all of our team, there's no one like that. But we've definitely had people in the past. And you have to weed those things out. Yes. Too. And yes. be like protective of your energy. And, yeah. um, you know, so just trying to we've had to learn. I feel like the past couple of years we've learned how to like protect and like conserve our energy for like ourselves and our families Ooh, yeah. and our shows um because man it'll you mm-hmm. just get drained so fast if you like one dud person and they'll drain it's like you. a cancer it just sucks it yes, out of you and yes. you go to bed thinking about it at night and yeah. we, we've been fortunate we've kind of weeded through and but it but it ebbs and flows you go through periods you oh, know yeah. everything will be rocking along real good for a couple of years and then the wheels will fall off i know <laughs> that's like I every know. other day for us i know <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of our career. So we've really learned how to like catch a good curveball, but we've yeah. definitely taken a couple to the We attract chin. the chaos. I don't we know really why. Do. We, really we do. don't I mean don't, to. We we are I don't, I don't faithful women that. and we I be like praying crazy all the time. Crazy people, crazy people our first ever tour manager that we had. I won't <laughs> name any names now. I but wish we could. Though. We found out we were on tour with Dirk Bentley as like the opener to the opener. And we found out that that whole tour he was like what was it with the money he wasn't he was sending in fake receipts and ended up stealing ten thousand yes. dollars yes and we had to like send the police to his house and he wasn't there and then he sent a check that wasn't it was a whole thing but um but yeah we just but honestly like we're in the process of dreaming up like writing a book and so I think maybe God was like I'm gonna give you some really good juicy stories for this book and I'll bless you with your chaos you know, I don't know it's just- it's so hard, and and I've I've been had people steal from me, people oh, that I man. trusted. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 a painful thing. But I think as you grow through the process, you learn how to put checks and balances in place. Oh where yeah, no one has complete access to anything. You've got to make sure that this one's yeah. watching that one, and yep. there's you know where you really have to be careful. And, yes. and it's it, it's just the temptation is almost too much for some people. Oh my gosh, it, yeah, it really is, and it, it's a sad thing. Oh, absolutely. You know, especially you know I, I got popped pretty hard early on by some managers for a good chunk like Ugh. hundreds of thousands of dollars what? and uh oh, and so and and when it's but you know it, they weren't they weren't really even embezzling it they were just blowing my money on on private jets and and oh, limos oh. and flying girls around and doing all these things and, and then know, a couple of years go by and you know it's where it all and my philosophy was probably like y'all I just want to sing. I don't. I didn't yeah. do this for the money. Yeah. I trust y'all. Y'all take care of my stuff, and sure. then we'll look at it somewhere down the road. Yeah. And then you do, and you find out that they've they've taken advantage of you. Oh, and that's really absolutely. Painful. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. We we just actually switched management. Um, you know, we're under the same management now, and it's just like the biggest godsend ever because you know just having good people like protecting yeah. those things. And luckily, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it's lucky, but I am like a super. Um, I am like really cheap and very frugal and like very, um, I look at the numbers yeah, like every aware. week. Yeah. yeah. Um, every week I'm looking at like what's in the account, what's not in the account, what's coming out. Da, 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 like, and it sometimes it drives me nuts, but, um, I don't know why I just like have always been that way. I'm very aloof. So we make a good team. Yeah. Right right the brain I don't yes. know what's happening. Yeah. With the business. Thing one things, and thing two. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> She's like, you want creative design? Got it. And I'm like, yeah. I want to crunch numbers? Got it. Like, I mean, I'm not over here crunching all the numbers by myself, but I definitely yeah. keep my head on a swivel with those kind of things. And I, I don't know if you ever had this experience, but when you come from just like normal, humble beginnings, you know, like I still pretend like I'm broke and I'm not broke, but me and my husband, like, we're like, we haven't been broke since we were, you know, 18. It's a hard habit. (laughs) I carried a lot of guilt. Yeah, I yeah. really did. I felt yeah. guilty about being successful, yeah. and then seeing my family members struggle and other things. I gave a whole lot of cars away early on, and it was, oh you my know, gosh. and and I had to get kind of out of that stuff because, oh, you know, I, especially my wife kind of put her foot down on some things. She Good. said, "You've got to stop trying to take care it's of everybody." It's a slippery Especially when you have it. a yeah. family, right. yeah. you got a mortgage. I mean, because we all have bills. I mean, well, have not, it's nice having money in the bank, but we still have things yeah. that cost. And exactly. and you, and the older you get, you 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 get a little bit older in years. 
years and you realize that you can't do the same things that you did 20 years ago. And you, if you don't yep. take care of your money between now and then, you'll wake up one day and you won't have any. You see it happening to athletes and stuff all the time. Absolutely. That make millions and millions of dollars and then wake up 10, 20 years down the road and they're absolutely broke. And it's yeah. a sad thing to see. Well, absolutely. And I think some people get like wrapped up in the lifestyle of oh, like yeah. the glitz and the glamour. We realized how not glamorous it was very early on when we're playing the street corner and, you know, the crustiest of restaurants because we can't play the bars because we were only 16 and, you know, just stuff like that. And so we we saw that early on. And so, you know, for us, we were like, we're going to be protective of like yeah. what we get and like what we're, you know, just just aware as much as possible of all yeah. of those things, yeah. you know. Uh, so y'all, when did y'all meet? Were y'all, it sounds like you were just teenagers when you we're met. A little bit. So baby. Oklahoma, Arkansas. Oklahoma oh, and Texas. Texas, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oklahoma and Texas. So how did y'all how did y'all run across each other? Should we can we tell the real story? Let's tell the we've never yeah. told oh, the real story. Well, I We're hear gonna the real tell story. it. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay, you ready for the real story? Okay, this boom, is boom, the boom. this is the real story. The we were we show. were media trained very early on when we got signed to Big Machine. We're now at Universal, so now that we don't have to follow their rules, we're yeah. gonna tell you the real and story. And we just kind of had to make up a story because it sounded more appealing than the real story. Yeah, okay. yeah. So the real story goes. Um, I wanted to be a songwriter and I found this vocal coach in Houston, um, that had worked with like other singers and like there was, you know, there was another gal in my town that, uh, or a family friend that was doing the music thing and I was kind of asking her about it and she was like, Hey, this is, you know, talk to this vocal coach and this person's connected in Nashville. And, and so it just so happened that I like found, you know, you know, a little door to kick open a little bit and. So I started going to these voice lessons and the vocal coach was like, hey, there's these other girls that are, you know, at my Dallas studio you should meet. And I was like, okay. And so I had already gone back and forth to Nashville. I didn't know that you didn't have to pay for writing sessions. So <laughs> I was paying to get, write songs with oh, people. Man. I won't tell the writers, but they were like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then I found out, oh, you that's not how it goes here. Yeah. So, um, but anyways, so um, I meet Tay and this other girl. And the vocal coach is like, you know, y'all should experiment with like harmonies and, you know, be in a trio. Simultaneously, I was going to that same vocal coach. Yeah. Um, and he basically told me one session, he was like, listen, if you want to make it in Nashville, they are not signing solo artists. They want the next Dixie Chicks. Like they need a trio. And so if you want to make it, this is kind of what you have to do. And he so was, was full like, of crap, though. I was like, Whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. Tell me anything. Yeah, like, that, I just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. Didn't, that didn't happen for Reba. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, but there exactly. is a lot to be said about it. And from a label's perspective, as, as I've gone through the business side of this, if when you're putting a roster together, you want a solo male, you want a solo female, sure, you, yeah. want a, you want a duo, you want a yeah. female duo, male trio, you, um, duo, you want trios, you yeah. want bands, right. because, yeah. because that's the award platform that you're playing yeah. to. And those things are very relevant in the music business. Exactly. Absolutely. And to be fair, there definitely was like a lack of, you know, Harmonies the girl groups. And, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Since the Judds. Yeah. Right. Since the Judds, yeah. yeah. There was a need there. So, so we, the three of us all met in Dallas and we instantly hit off. And the other gal was nice, but there was some. She was just a little bit older, like her, her values and just sort of different. What she was interested in was just different. Different, yeah. And like her, her family was like. I'm just going to say a little crazy. Look, we're all crazy, but like our crazies, <laughs> our crazies weren't really meshing, you know? Yeah. And, and our like, crazies. Our crazies were meshing, yeah. And, they and still, that's very important. They, oh, it's yes. very, because we're, we're all crazy. We're all crazy. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Without a doubt. So long story short, we end up telling like the third girl, like, hey, we're, you know, not going to do this anymore. And then T calls me and she's like, hey, we going to do this, just me and you. I'm like, okay, cool. And so um, she wasn't like stoked about it, but I don't think her, her like yeah. mind, like we were laser focused. Yes. We were like, let's chase this thing down. And she was like, you it's know, for fun. Floating. Yeah. 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 It was more for fun for yeah. her. And we were like, this is what we want our life to be. So anyways, so once we do that, we start going back and forth to Nashville together. We're 15 and 16 at the time and going back and forth and writing and figuring out harmonies and being in the studio, you know, all that stuff's really, um, challenging in the beginning. Cause it, yeah. you know, when you're used to just an acoustic guitar and us and, you know, doing takes, you know, just all the learning curves. Yeah. And so 
we were doing that for a while and then we started getting connected in Nashville um, because the writers that we were writing with that weren't making us pay <laughs> um, were going around and being like, hey, there's these two girls and they're they're really talented and they're young. And, you know, um, so we met with a, a guy named Mike Molinar over at Big Machine Music, mm-hmm. who is still our publisher to yes. this day. Uh, almost 15 years later and he was kind of the one who discovered us and really nurtured our talents and like our vision and um so we that kind of the rest was history but we moved to Nashville together um once it was like five days after I graduated high school we moved to Nashville we're only three months apart in age Maddie's born in July she all graduated the same year but I was I was a year behind in school you graduated in 2013 2013, and I would have graduated in 2014 but I ended up dropping out of high school and I just got my GED Mm -hmm. and then I had to get emancipated from my parents to sign my publishing deal because wow. she was too young to sign it was wild yeah wild. so we so, just, so you graduated in 2013 i would have graduated but, in but right there so so y'all got your deals when you were basically 18 years old yes yes once oh, we turned 18 early. we got we, the, oh yeah we yeah. signed our record contract in the studio cutting girl in a country song yeah no kidding it was yeah. and and bizarre. so but you'd done a lot of groundwork between the time you started coming up at 14 15 years yeah. old yes so you had made inroads and everything too so there was a little bit of, of a track record of several years of of moving in that definitely direction. we were writing all day every day 9 a.m to 7 p.m we were like just two day two writes a, a day and intentionally writing i mean there were writes where we were like what like what is our message as yeah. maddie and tay yeah. like what do we want to to like what, to what's your world? gonna be exactly. what's your gonna be your your theme or what's your yes what how do you want people to look at you what yeah your... exactly and it happened just so organically i mm-hmm. mean i remember one of the first songs we wrote together was called roots and wings and it was yes. just like this really like sweet song about having roots and it was like my head wants roots but my heart wants wings and our and our <laughs> business is like you know named after that yeah song, kind yeah of. So i don't did, know if i'm so sorry did, about that. Machine <laughs> give you all, did they did they give you a how much creative control did they give you out of the box? I mean, if they'd been grooming you and working with you for a little while, did they, did they let you spread your wings a little bit? Did they give you a couple yeah. songs? Did you have to fight for your stuff? Because that's the early. You're very young to be stepping into all that. Yeah. I, mean, um, I would say immense creative freedom because when it came time to cut our first record, yeah. it, we had already written it all from the time we were 16 to 18. It was yeah. all that's songs. Great. It was already but, done. Yeah. You know what was so great? I think we definitely could have gotten like chewed up and spit out, but... Thank God we had Mike Molinar and Alex Heddle over at Big Machine Music really protecting us and protecting our vision and who we were and who we weren't um, and just going in these meetings that we weren't in and fighting for us and, um, you know, raising a flag when we didn't feel good about something because we didn't hire a manager until after we were on radio tour. Really? So, yeah, it was so we were we didn't know that you could say no. We, we didn't know that was an option. So we just, yeah, ran ourselves ragged. And then we were like, oh, you can say no? Like, you can say, you know. And then I was like, no, 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 no. Just <laughs> how, uh, how involved were your parents with you as you were going through this early process? Super Very. involved in the beginning. And then once we moved out, they, you know, they trusted Mike and Alex once they really got a relationship with them. Which they, must have been hard. I mean, oh, they yeah. were they were letting us go at 16 years old, basically. And and, and I'm leading that. I'm, I'm going toward a question because we all know that this has been a male-dominated industry for mm-hmm. a long time, and, mm-hmm. and misogynistic people do still exist in this industry. Know, Did yeah. y'all deal with any of that stuff early on, or were you oh, pretty yeah. shielded from it? No. Because people, people tend to talk down to you which and, oh, and as an artist especially if you're young. young and a young female Oof. so I, I mean I, I didn't have to go through that I can yeah. you explain that how, how that was for you yeah it was rough yeah it was not easy it's very different now than it was when girl in a country song came out yeah. um, I'll tell you one of like the mini horror stories we had a radio guy um, we like sat down for the interview for it was like ACMs or something yeah. and it was the radio remotes it was our first time doing remotes and we're like okay so we sit down and he's like, all right, we're going to start this interview off by saying, how many men have y'all slept with? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. yeah. Live. Wow. And I said. And they think it's funny. And yeah. it's not funny. Oh, yeah. we were humiliated. And I said, how many men have you slept with? <laughs> and he was like, so uncomfortable. And <laughs> I was like. Well, should have been. Yeah. And I was like, if. Oh, my. Yeah. It was just a whole thing. And, and what so, was sad was like, I was looking to our radio rep at the time and I was like. Like cut, cut like obviously yeah. we're not going to do this anymore. And he was just like, "No, you got to do suck it. it up." Like he it's didn't part of step the thing. in. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that, that would be very frustrating. So we yeah. get very protective of 
uh, not just new female artists, but new artists in general, we try to reach out as soon as possible when things start taking off. Always. Um, yeah. Like yeah. Lainey Wilson being one of them, being like, hey, we got your back. We love you. Yes. If you ever just need to like vent or, you know, just someone that gets it, like, you know, obviously we haven't reached the her level, you know, but still knowing we know how hard this business is oh, and just yeah. know that there's people who love you just as a person, don't need a dang thing from you. Just we're here and we yeah. love you. And we, and we just try to do that because there, we had some artists that did that for us too. Dirks yeah. Bentley was one of them that really took us under his wing. And just, I still text him to this day and just He's check in. He's such a good guy. He's he such a good guy. And, um, but yeah, that's something that like we feel passionate about. Cause in the beginning we just didn't, you know, there wasn't that community like there is now. It was There's different. much more awareness now than there was even when I started yeah. in the early nineties. I mean, it was a whole different ball game back then. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. It, it really was difficult, you know, and, and I, I love Lainey too, but you know, just three years ago, she was opening shows for me and Justin Moore with an acoustic oh, guitar. I Absolutely. I'm telling you, she's, she's, but, but the, those overnight successes don't happen overnight. Exactly. There's years, she's, Year grounded out for years to yes. get to where she's at. And Absolutely, she just, but all the stars lined up, and it just went boom. Uh, and it's and amazing to see. Oh, I love, I love so it. Much. I love watching people win. I, I do too. I think it's sad when people. You know, one thing um, T and I will never forget about the Dirks Bentley tour that has stuck with us forever was one night we were talking outside of his bus, and he had on he had written on his arm in Sharpie, "Celebrate others." And I feel like maybe I think he his single was maybe not doing as good at radio as he was thinking, or like you know maybe his buddies you know you have those moments where your buddies pass you up and then yeah. things get weird you know just things like that and I don't know if that's what was going on but that's just kind of what I've like put together but yeah. um t didn't you ask him about it and he yeah. said it's really he, yeah he was just like yeah I was on the plane ride over here and I was struggling so I just wrote this reminder to to look at all day and it, to us I mean Dirks is like the, the pinnacle we're like yeah. oh my gosh to, to, to think that he's in his position and still sort of struggling with that comparing yourself to others was mm -hmm. just like I don't know it just really humanized him and really yeah. had us relate to him and but so you know we're yeah. all still with it, dealing with the same things I oh mean, absolutely the highs and lows of the business yes and, you know you you have a hit record in one week and then you can't get radio to play something and yeah. let me tell you at, at the end of your radio career when you step away from that that's a pretty big shock to the system too after you've been watching records go up and down the charts for years and oh, then all of yeah. a sudden what's the next stage of your life look like i mean because none of it lasts forever Ex and it that's just, the and, key and but but as long as you always try and, and guys like dirks do i mean you can tell with hot country nights and the way that they kind of <laughs> make fun of themselves and take everything so lightly that it's really good to not take yourself too seriously. Yes. Absolutely. Because none of this is real. No. no. It's not. And I think, um, so just like a shorter version of this, we were with Big Machine for, what, two years? And then our record label out of nowhere shut down. And so we were in the middle of making the sophomore record, which, as you know, is so much pressure. Yep. It's like you got to follow up the first and you got to, you know. So we're like, oh, my gosh. And I was struggling because my self-worth was so wrapped up in what I did and not who I was. Yeah. And so after that, we both, I think T had a way better handle on it than I did. But I just really you know, was like, I'm not enough. This is, you know, like I just took it all, you know, on my shoulders when really it was like, God was just like, Hey, we just need to, we're, we're switching roads here. And I just need you to let me take the wheel and you just sit in the passenger seat and enjoy like, and I'm over here just fighting the change with everything I have. And it was the best thing that could have happened for us. And mm -hmm. like, just through those hard times, we wrote Die From a Broken Heart, which, you know, went on to be this huge song for us. And it's just like, you can't, like, the, there's always purpose in the pain. And if your self-worth is wrapped up in what you do, whoo, that is not a good place to put your uh, it heart. It really isn't. And, and this, is, this is an industry where everything is wrapped around, you know, what you do, how you look, yes. how people perceive you. Superficial. It's, it's, it's just... very superficial. And there's times that, if you come from a Christian background, like I, I can tell you, you both do, yeah. and I did too, uh, that you struggle with it sometimes because yeah. when you really get down to it, this is basically uh, celebrating idolatry. Absolutely. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And I struggle with it still. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and it's not, I, I still get the rush out of going out there and I still love it like we all do. But there's there's an addiction that comes with having success on the radio and all the adoration yes. and the, the, the attention from the fans. Yes. And it's... When y'all, when we went through COVID, 
I had the hardest time getting off the treadmill because I, I didn't want to accept we weren't going back to work. Oh, and same. I had an even harder time getting it going again after wow. I, after we started work. How did y'all did y'all experience any of those emotions through that? Absolutely. Yeah. I would say 2020 was probably your 20. 18 like and yes. a similar feeling that I had because I remember we were having a number one with Die From a Broken Heart at the same time that we were supposed to be going out on tour with Lady Annabellum and yeah. it was just like I was ready to get that momentum going again and like mm-hmm. finally like we're at it again yeah it had been then, five years between hit songs for yeah. us which in the artist world is an eternity <laughs> like yeah. it's hard to get momentum it's hard for lightning to strike twice but even harder when five years has passed mm-hmm. and, and I remember getting the phone call that hey like this tour isn't happening and it's just getting canceled altogether we're not even rescheduling it and I sobbed. I'm pretty sure there's a video on my phone that I took oh. of myself just crying and just processing. And it, I don't know why I took it so hard. It's probably, that's a good way of putting it. Getting off the treadmill mm-hmm. was just like, I, I didn't want to. I was ready to just fight for this. Yeah. But I remember I texted everyone that meant a lot to me in my life. And I said, what are three words that you would describe me as. Because I need to hear that I'm more than just you need some validation. Tay of Maddie and Tay. Like mm-hmm. I'm Taylor who is a mother now and a best friend and mm-hmm. I'm strong and I'm brave and all these things that have nothing to do with me being on stage. And it was it was hard. It yeah. really was. I remember that text and being like, oh, she going through it. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, Cause she never, like T is a yeah. very, I mean, it's taken me almost 15 years to peel back the layers of this onion. It is the never ending onion. And I love it. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm like, here's my heart and soul. What do you want to know? Like, yeah. and it's this beautiful, perfect balance of like, we're each other's safe place in very different ways. Like yeah. she needs me to bring her out of her little onion. <laughs> and she, I need her to be like, hey, we don't have to show the book to everybody. You don't have to <laughs> tell everybody all <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. Let, let's, you know, some pages aren't for everybody, you know, and I'm just, you know, so, um, but it's a really nice balance. Yeah. But it's, you know, we both had the moments of like, I am not worthy because it was tied up in what we did. But it was just very, it was different years. Yeah. So we like flip flopped that feeling. And I remember her calling me and I had already like kind of processed some of that. And it definitely came back up like the purpose stuff. And I was like, God, that's exactly how I felt yeah. when the label shut down. And so we just both like clung to each other. And you know what we finally made time for was Fun. Yes. When we were when we started a band in fi- at fifteen, we had no days off. Like we wrote, all we consuming. were yeah, all consuming. All you can do. And yeah. then when we became business women, we didn't have time. You know, for we used to like go shopping at the mall or go go to the movies and you know just like fun stuff. And we were like, you know what? We can't do it. Like. Let's just have some fun, and God forbid we have some dang fun, you know. And we yeah. had fun. Oh, we you. did. We did. You got to do that. You have got to have balance, you know. I yeah. When I when I first hit and things started rolling for me in the early nineties, uh, I got to spend a lot of time with Tanya Tucker, <gasps> and I loved her dearly. She was still pretty wild back then, yeah. uh, but being around her at a later age of life, you you realize Tanya had a huge career, and she she was on the radio at fourteen years old. Whoa! So she I didn't she didn't, realize that she didn't she didn't go to the prom. She didn't. Go out, get to go out to the movies and go on dates. She yeah. missed a whole section of her childhood, mm-hmm. and so she spent a whole chunk of her life trying to find that. Yes. Yeah, and so you you sacrifice so much when you start this at a young age that absolutely, that, and you don't even realize you're doing it at the time because you're so hungry and you dream it, and you want it so bad, absolutely, that, that you wind up missing out on some you things. You do, and it yeah. is weird for me to realize that we were child stars. Like it's like just we like. Were s- Babies. It's just weird. Like yeah. I don't want to think yeah. about us that way. Because and, well, and it gets worse when your kids get to the age yes. that you. And then you go, Oh my god! Oh my god! You're 14. I remember when I was 14. I thought I was a whole different thing. But you're oh, just yeah. a little baby. Mm-hmm. I know. And it's like, thank God we had each other. You know, because we, you know, ev- all everything has gone. It has gone up and down, all around. Freaking disaster. Freaking super the huge. Music the music, <laughs> yes, but. Through it all, we've had each other, yeah. and that's the, been the constant. Like our, like unconditional love of like our sisterhood and our friendship does not shake. I like, mean, we say every day we're like, if this all goes away, like we're still in this together. Yeah, in like, this life, we're yeah. we're best friends, we're sisters. Yeah, it's a very special like, thing. Yeah, yes. like really gun to is. our head, you have to pick being friends or this career. 
our friendship friends. every single time. Yeah. The career can kick rocks if it has to. <laughs> like our friendship comes first. And I mean, we don't want it to kick rocks because it pays our bills. But <laughs> if it did, we would always choose each other over that. Um, yeah. Because it's just, you know, chosen family, which is such a yeah. blessing. I want to go back to some of your hometowns. You, you're from Sugar Land, yes. Texas. And you're from. I'm from Ada, Oklahoma, originally. Ada, Oklahoma. Yeah. Yes. You know, you look like a very good friend of mine. <gasps> Lacey Chandler. Do you That's, know the Chandler? No, I don't. She is from Ada, Oklahoma, too. But no she way. gets that a lot. They live right there in that house. It's right <gasps> inside of her gate. She is what the if dance you got a teacher surprise cut where, our, where our children danced. They, her husband and her on the dance Wait, studio. that's crazy. I'm trying to think of any Chandlers that I know from Ada. I don't. But I smiled because every time I meet somebody, they're like, you look like you could someone. You be baby my, sister. Yeah. I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. How cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. But so, my family moved from Ada to Durant when I was like 14. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, do you know where Durant, Oklahoma is? I do know where Durant, Oklahoma is. Chalk Talk I have played, played a lot of, uh, and back then there was like a, uh, the Arbuckle Ballroom. Oh, yeah. Do you remember Arbuckle? Oh, yeah. Wasn't that in Ada? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had some big times. The McSwain <laughs> Theater. Yeah. So, uh, so I remember cool. Can't Break It to My Heart was written in McAllister, Oklahoma, which yeah. was a big record for me. Wow. At, uh, I wrote so the cool. chorus in the line at the Western Sizzling and I wrote it on a paper <gasps> napkin in the tray as I was going through the line. We'd stop for lunch. Oh, and what a story. Gosh. That's so yeah. cool. Cool. Wow. So we spent a lot of time. I grew up in southwest Arkansas, which is right in the furthermost corner of Arkansas. It borders okay. Texas. Uh, Texas, the Red River border is okay. in between Texas to the south. And Oklahoma is about seven miles wow. to the west. Wow. So I grew up in a dry, a dry county, but you could buy beer in Oklahoma when you were a teenager. <laughs> oh, back my then gosh. That's awesome. But that's awesome. Idabel and Broken Bow yes. and all that area. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Idabel and Broken Bow. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. That's Did y'all so ever run cool. around down there? We did. I remember <laughs> When I when I did track back in like middle school, Broken Bow was like my competition. It was Broken so Bow Lake, funny. Broken Bow Lake is a beautiful place. Y'all ever get the chance yes. to go there? They've yeah. done a lot of development there, a lot of cabins and things. We go there. kayaking down there a lot. It's beautiful. That's awesome. This is random, but have you ever heard of Garner State Park or like Mm-mm. Concan, Texas, or anything like that? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, it's just funny because like I was saying, my younger self would be dying had I said, "Hey, you're gonna like sit and hang out with." freaking Tracy Lawrence because um, there's this thing I, I grew up going to this little like river town and it was real small in the beginning and now it's like booming but yeah. there the Bronzeville or something like yes, that yes it's yeah. like it's basically a new Braunfels but like a little more quiet um, a little more laid back more family friendly I would say and so um, we would go to this thing called the Garner Dance at the state park and it was like this you know little you know, just a little dance floor like in the in the trees and everything and all it was literally like it was either you or George or Kenny, and that's <laughs> I learned to dance by from your songs. Like I learned how it's to two step. Music, oh yeah. my gosh, yeah! And Mid I'm like, and waltzes. oh, time Woo! marches on yeah. every time that. And like, the, it was a very, um, it was a very crucial part of my childhood because this Core dance, memory. yeah, this dance, you had to go up and ask someone to dance. Like so, you had to like, like a Sadie Hawkins. Yes, thing. yes, yeah. but like either a boy would come up to you and would you like to dance, or you would go, would you like to dance, and it teaches you like confidence. You know, <laughs> you know all about that, don't you, Junior? Absolutely, <laughs> oh, you do. <laughs> Good. So, so these guys back here, uh, we call him Junior, but his name is Derek. Derek plays second guitar in the band. He does yep. all the audio. Scott's oh, cool. piano player in the band. He does all the video. <gasps> Oh, so my this, gosh. So these guys are on the road with me all the time. Wow. The next time our band guys complain about doing something extra, I'm be like, you know what Tracy's <laughs> guys do? So y'all better hush I up. They have a big dime. <laughs> they do enjoy all of it. That's amazing. But, yeah, so I, like... I just remember there were so many of your songs that would play, and we'd be two stepping. And you'd be like, "So, what's your name? Where are you from?" I don't know, you know. What's and then, your sign? yeah, oh yeah, I'm like, I don't even know that stuff. But I mean, but then sometimes you got rejected, so it really like Oof. you'd go up to like the cute guy, or I would, and I'd be like, "Would you like to dance?" He'd be like, "No," and I'm like, "Oh, okay," oh. and I'd walk away, and it, that one stung a little bit. And then you have my dad would be like, "Better get back out there and go," you know, and get so, back in there. Yeah, go ahead, and then I'd go ask another guy, and be like, "Yeah, sure, and I, okay." And then I'm proud of you. Oh, yeah. So I'm like, I don't know if maybe my outgoingness was because it's like you have to go out yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. My sister would be like, I'm sitting here and I'm not dancing unless somebody asks me. And That'd I'm be like, me. Yeah. <laughs> so did you ever get stage fright or were you always real comfortable when you first got on stage? You have to no, work through that? I didn't have stage fright. You didn't either. I, st- I definitely got nervous, but it, I, like, yeah. I feel the most 
safe in me on stage. Same. Always. Yeah. yeah. Like my first talent show, my parents were like, oh God, she's going to throw up or pee her pants or something. <laughs> okay. When you, when you started touring, is there, can you remember a bad show where you just came off going, I don't know if we can do this? Oh, yeah. You, tell, tell me one. Oh, yeah. The Cincinnati one. Yes. We opened for Chase Rice. Yes. It was at one of Toby Keith's uh, bars. Maybe. Yeah. Oh. I love this bar. Yeah. yeah. I love. Uh, yeah, I love me some Toby <laughs> Keith. Um, and so uh, we played this show and I lost my voice. Yeah. And so I got off stage and was sobbing and I was telling our bass player, I was like, no one in Cincinnati, Ohio is ever going to come to one of our shows. <laughs> because, and mind you, I'm like 18 and I'm just beating myself up. Like, yeah, it's not horrible. And he's like, buddy, you're sick. Like, you It been, happens. Everybody. Yeah. And you've been you touring. You've not been home in eight months and like yeah. you're sick and you're just trying to, you know, make it through. And I'm like, but I ruined our career. And he's like, buddy. It, this is one of many. And so then, like, the next time I lost my voice, I was, like, <sighs> crying a little. And he's like, what did I tell you last time? I'm like, everything's going to be okay. <laughs> okay, on the other side of that, one of the pinnacle shows that you've ever had. Oh, man. Those magic moments. I know you've had at least oh, one. Um, so many, yeah. I will say, we did the Cry Pretty Tour 360 with Carrie Underwood back yeah. in 2019. Yeah. Um, and we played Madison Square Garden, which wow. was, like, my dream. Yeah. I was 17, like freshly moved to Nashville and I've always made vision boards since I was This like, is honestly, wild, by the way. Like I was four years old and I would just open a magazine and circle everything I wanted and that was like my vision board back then. Um, but I made like a fake ticket that said Madison Square Garden. I think it was like a Taylor Swift ticket and I like put Maddie and Tay over it and it said um, set start 7.30 sold out show at Madison Square Garden and we played Madison Square Garden at like 7.20 10 minutes off uh -huh. to, a, to a sold out audience and that was just one of those moments where oh, I was it gives like, me shivers. I yeah. just realized how far we had come and I, I made my younger me so proud and it was oh, yeah. really cool. It was really, it, yeah. it's, it just goes to show like I mean, it, it'll take years and years and years, but man, if you just don't let up, like eventually yeah. something's going to happen, yeah. you know? I, you just have to keep your head down sometimes. And it, yep. even when you go through the sluggish spots where you're kind of wondering if you might need to rethink what you're doing, you just got to fight. We quit every day. Down. We quit this job every day. We're like, I quit. <laughs> yeah, <but laughs> you quit. Oh, no. We, I know. But, it is. Yeah. But, but there's highs and lows in everything. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And you just have to like, and, and I say that jokingly because we were in a writing session with the guys we wrote Die From a Broken Heart with. Do you know you know Jonathan Singleton and Derek Rattan, huh? Have you? I don't, I don't think I've ever worked You would with love, you, you got to write with yeah. them. You would love them. Um, but I, we were having one of those days a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, I just, sometimes I just don't know if we're meant to do this. And they're like, oh yeah, we quit like yesterday, but we're here. And, and so it's like, <laughs> it's that joke with the music business, like, ah, I'm going to quit. It's too hard. And it's like, nope, once you you're in, quitting. it's your yeah. soul. Your spirit is just like, yeah. so in love with music that you're like, I will put up with all the BS so I can do this. Like, And you have to have that drive inside if you yeah, absolutely. Or you, or you don't need to do this. But there You're are in this days. to see your name on the marquee or you're in it for the money. You're in oh, the wrong business. Oh, no. Absolutely. We, we want to pay our bills, yeah. feed our babies, make music that we love, and leave a legacy for our babies that they'll be proud of. Yes. So tell me about your songwriting uh, approach. Do y'all do y'all write a lot still? I, I have a hard time writing on the road. I got a schedule. Oh, we can't. Do you, we can't do, you, do it. Um, do you keep a notepad with ideas? you keep it in your phone? Do you just store stuff in archive? Uh, I'm, I'm a schedule person, are y'all? Same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think because we're so creative that yes. that schedule, like God bless Lindsay for keeping the crazy trains on the tracks because it helps my brain compartmentalize a little yeah. better. Yeah. But, but yeah. We can't ride on the road either. We've tried. <laughs> Too many distractions. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And there's like something to be said about, you know, when we're on the road, we want to like fully be in show mode, stage yeah. mode, yeah. creative mode. And then it's just like a different hat to wear when you're yes. trying to write a song. Too many hats wearing at once. You too can't wear hats. too many hats. And, and that's when we learn to protect our energy because you yeah. can't just, you can't do both at mm -hmm. the same time for us at yeah. least. But our writing process has been the same since yeah. we were 15. We... Um, typically, so like we know our strong suits, like T is the writer in the room that one, she brings like incredible concepts and ideas and like Thanks. just, oh yeah, it's, it's incredible to watch her. I feel like I get to learn from one of my favorite Same. lyricists, but I'm more of a melody gal. So between the two of us, it's just always been like a really really good balance and we always write together very rarely I think the only time that we didn't write together she was on maternity leave and I was bored so I was like I'll go you know write some songs with some buddies but um we always write together and we typically like 
we get a lot of ideas on the road because we we're do. like living life. Yeah. Um, and then we just bring them back to town and then, you know, write just, them. But in our notes, just like yeah. ideas. But I'm ideas. I'm old school. I write in a notebook because the laptop and the phone's too distracting for me in a writing session. So I've got notebooks from like the last 10 years of like lyrics from all of our songs and stuff, which is pretty cool. But I just, I don't know, my brain, te- well, technology in general kind of wakes me out. I'm, I am not... I'm not a good millennial, I would say. I have to text Tay, like, hey, how do you do this on Instagram? She's like, you old granny, this is how you do it. I'll, like, send her videos, like, tutorials. Yeah, this is how you do a post. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, okay. If you held a gun to my head, I could navigate Facebook to save my life. I don't get on those. Oh, no, Mm -hmm. it's too much. I haven't had Twitter in, like, seven years. Yeah. I I was pretty, I got wrapped up in TikTok pretty heavy for a while. Oh, yeah. And and I would find myself sitting there in front of the TV, and three hours would go by, and I've done absolutely nothing. And I had, I'd take it off my phone. Oh, I know. I can't do this anymore. It's just getting out of control. Yeah. I'm just watching 30 minute, 30 second clips of stupid, ignorant stuff. Oh my gosh. And sometimes it's like, there's some helpful little, you know, I like to garden and I've got like a chicken and stuff. So I always watch little homestead videos and like. Just one chicken. Just so what happened, Tracy, <laughs> we had a subject, lot. Tell Tracy. me about the chicken. Let, let me tell you about the Does chicken. Does the chicken have a name? Her name is Una because okay. she's the lone survivor of the chickens. <laughs> So this chick, this chicken, is bad, man. She is like a she bad mamma She's jamma. a dog. She does think she's a dog because okay. So long story short, um, we had chickens. We moved houses. We brought the chickens, um, and in the woods there is no. It is not a place for the chickens. And so the raccoons tore up our chickens. We got another batch of chickens, and Una was in that batch, and those got torn up. And but she survived, and so she survived two massacres, <laughs> and so she has Poor earned Una. she has earned her keep, and so now she's like a little wild chicken. Like Una will come home, and she has hopped the fence. I don't know how, but she just like gets out and she just greets you whenever you come out of the car, and then jumps in my car. And I'm like, what are you doing? Get you're disgusting. You're a chicken. Like, she, but she thinks she's a dog, and because we have two dogs that she runs around with but like she's just she's weird man but she deserves her life because she's she fought, fought hard yeah. she fought and she I'm like Did, what if she killed all the chickens <laughs> what a plot twist I mean I don't know I won't put it past this doesn't her, sound like a good children's book <laughs> <laughs> The lone chicken. The, lone the chicken. lonesome yeah. chicken. But she responds when you talk to her. You're like, Una, get in the fence. And she's like, Chickens can be smart. Yeah, I had a pet sassy. chicken when I was a little bit. Her name was Betsy. My oh, brother murdered you, my Betsy. chicken. <gasps> he put the lawnmower on the wrong side of the, of the storage oh. shed where uh, Betsy stayed at night. And oh. she got up on roosting on the handlebars on the <gasps> lawnmower. And she fell and got her foot hung. And she hung upside down. And oh, my gosh. And I was so, so mad traumatic. at him for a long time. But she was a big old white laying hen. And Betsy uh-huh. followed me everywhere. She'd sit in my lap. I mean, oh, oh, I, I like the white kinds of critters when I was a kid. Oh, really? yeah, we did too. We still, we got six dogs and four cats in the house right now. A pair of Great Danes right on down to a Pekingese and a Shih Tzu. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. That's I amazing. love that. We, we used to critters. bring home animals all the time. My sister actually works in a vet office now, but I brought home like a tortoise one time I found oh, in the road. Lots of turtles. Lots turtles all the time. We, when the kids were little, uh, after we got tired of the fish, I took the aquarium and made a terrarium out Oh, yeah, how's your fish so going? It, yeah, you got fish. I'm a similar She's situation to the chickens. I've had two Two batches of fish now because my daughter she's two and she is like obsessed with all things living animals fish marine life um her favorite movie is finding nemo okay so yeah, we got her a it's little a yeah we got her a yeah. little fish tank and the first mistake was we got tropical fish and those they, are too hard they're <laughs> yeah they're moody little creatures are they really? yeah well, they're probably pissed off they're in a tank right and the yeah. water was too cold so they like froze to death which oh, is that's... sad and she and Layton goes oh fishy seeping <laughs> they went night night that's what we told yeah, her and then we got like seven goldfish and then the next morning we woke up and there were only four <gasps> so they had eaten, eaten each, each other, other and oh. they were all belly up yeah uh. Well, that's why we went through that, and we turned the aquarium into a terrarium. And then, I, okay. if I would find a frog or a lizard or anything, I would always bring it in. We would that's talk free. about it, and we'd look it up. Yeah. And then, when it was see a little light of time to go, we'd just let it loose, and I'd go find something else. We oh, just rotated yeah. things. Up. Oh, my husband. But it was a great so opportunity mad. for the kids to play with it. No yes. snakes, so I'm not. Gonna, no, I don't no, like no, no, the no, snakes. No. I have a theory about the snakes. The devil was a serpent. Yeah. In Genesis, for a reason, they okay. are creepy. Mr. No Shoulders is not welcome in my house. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
thing is, Mister, I do not like them things. Those, and we've got them bad in the woods. Like there, sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, and my husband just like, let me do some man stuff, get my shotgun, pop out, and you know, and he just loves it, get some man stuff. <laughs> but I do always bring home critters still, and my husband Jonah gets so mad. I hid a turtle from him for about two days, and then he busted me. And then one time, I found oh, I found the cutest. Oh, what was it? I can't remember. I just found something cute. I think it was baby maybe a bunny, frog. Baby bunny rabbits are fun yeah. for just a little bit. I right. had I had baby bunnies, and then he made me get rid of those, yeah. and then. It's just too much responsibility. Now that I have a kid, I'm like, oh my gosh, oh, no. no more animals. Like, don't. But I was kind of Snow White when I first moved into the woods, and all the animals would try to come. Birds and, and land on your fingers. Oh, and yeah. Like and I'd be, ah, 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 you know, and then they'd come. And yeah, but yeah, Jonah's like. Yeah, but how old's your baby? Uh, five months. Little boy, little girl. Little boy named okay. Forrest. We live in the forest, and his name's Forrest. Forrest. <laughs> so, so him. I, I did. You have uh, like dogs and stuff when you were little. Oh Children yeah. Children need a pet. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. We've got two dogs, yeah. and he loves the dogs. Love the dogs, and he loves the chicken too. But sometimes she'll try to peck him. I'm like, I will punt you across uh. the entire property. <laughs> and and your baby. She's two, and we don't have animals, so that's. But when she we comes go. over a lot. Yeah. Yes, and when we go over to Auntie Maddie's house, is what yeah. she calls her. Yeah, she's like in heaven. Oh, with the yeah. chicken and the and the trees. Oh, she yeah, it. she's she's a nature girly. Yeah. So I I know when my wife was pregnant with our first child, and we were on the road all the time, she could always tell when she would come out and sit on the side of the stage and watch the show that if Skylar was restless in her belly, she would just <gasps> calm down and stop, and the music would start playing. After she was born, when she would come out, Skylar would be fine until the music started about three songs in. She would fall asleep every single oh. time. When you were, Could you oh. tell those things when you were pregnant? My mama had six kids, and she, <gasps> she swears that she could tell the personality of each one of us by the way we were when she was carrying That's us. That's crazy. Yeah, I, yeah you kind of got I didn't get robbed. to tour while I was pregnant, but you did. Yeah, I, did, I, I toured up until I was... 37 weeks pregnant, yeah. which not going to do that and again. And they feel that music. Yes. They oh, feel it all. He, yeah. <laughs> there was one time where I was playing, I think we were playing Shut Up and Fish, and he, I, he, I was so big, and he kicked my guitar, and my monitor engineer was like, what was that noise? I was like, it was my baby, <laughs> my baby. <laughs> kicking the guitar. But there were certain songs that he would like get crazy on. I'd be like, oh, buddy, calm down. I can't breathe. But it's funny. Like, there's definitely songs of ours that I'll sing that'll calm him down. Yeah. But he's it, like, his personality, I knew he was going to be like goofy and wild because he was, j I just felt that when he was in my tummy and he like for being from Houston like my husband likes some Houston rap and so some of it's like just really like ratchet music and he yeah. will calm down to like some of the most insane rap music and then probably like, things that he heard when you were carrying yeah, yeah. But, but I didn't yeah. listen to like that much rap but like it's just it's just funny yeah. he's he's very much like me and yeah. Jonah and Layton she, I mean her story just you know, she's a little fighter. Yeah, that's, well, because we were supposed to go on our headlining tour in, what was it, January? 2022. 2022, or April, March. What's her middle Can't name? Remember. Does it start with her C? Her name's Leighton Grace. I knew it, it's starting with Leighton C, I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that was really bad, wasn't it? <laughs> Leighton C. C, oh my God. Sorry. Oh, wait, I'll that's go good. Nerds, I'll <laughs> I was so slow to that, but I like it. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, that's good. To you. Oh, no, well, man, I love sorry, it. Leighton G. Instead. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she, yeah, we were supposed to tour, and I was so excited to, like, get on stage and rock a big belly and just see what that would experience would feel like. But I ended up going into preterm labor when I was 24 weeks pregnant. Oh, goodness. That's really early. Very early. I was hardly halfway. Um, and I went to the hospital and stayed in the hospital for five weeks weeks and I held her in and I just kind of like chilled I had to like put you on bed rest and everything bed rest. Yeah. that's right strict bed rest no movements no nothing um and then I went into labor at like 28 weeks and then I was in labor for like five days and then I had her on January 17th did they start her on the the development shots for respiratory and all that they stuff sure early did. On yeah I was on steroids like yeah. twice a day um all of it the magnesium drip make you mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I the was I was going cuckoo in the yeah. hospital. Uh, cuckoo. Cuckoo. No, you weren't. You yes, handled I that like a ch Thank I mean, you. she was so tough. I, I was just sobbing, trying not to be around her 
so she wouldn't see me crying, but she, I just... Yeah, she was born two pounds, five ounces. How long did she yeah. have to stay in the hospital? She was in the NICU for 53 days, so a little yeah. under two months. Um, yeah. yeah, which was and, shorter than they thought. Yeah. Um, but she's just like so she's so tough spicy. you wouldn't know she's a preemie she's very tiny but her intellect she is just a chatty Genius. sassy girl yeah. oh yeah. my gosh she's so, so that's funny. amazing what they can do nowadays oh I my know. gosh we were on we were on facetime uh when we were on the road because we had to leave our babies which oh my gosh is also so hard but um so we were facetiming her and i was eating chips and she goes Maddie eating chips i'm like <laughs> yeah and she her our her nanny she's like yeah yeah yay didn't want chips <laughs> She's like, Maddie eating chips. Yayton want chips. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she just says some funny yeah. stuff, Kids are man. Amazing. Oh my gosh, she's the and best. In every stage, the terrible twos have their challenges. That's what she's but in right so now. Fun. They, they they have their fun moments, but wait till they're teenagers. Oh. You're gonna you're gonna I'm cry gonna to lie. God and you're gonna apologize to your parents for so many things. Oh my I'm scared, well, Tracy. Oh, yeah. And you had apologize. teenage girls in that. Oh, it's, we, we've had moments of pure hell. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Where you're I like, I, love them. I am going to just, you know, jack you up full. Like, I'm going to yeah. knock you into next week. Absolutely, because the attitude, woof. Oh I was a real a-hole from like 13 to 15. But then I was like, eh, I'm not really into the a-hole thing, so I'll just be nice again. But <laughs> I don't know how my, my mother survived. We had, she had three boys and three girls. Oh, and and wow. we we all came with our own. Personalized Quirks. challenges. Oh <laughs> yeah, I know. My husband, <laughs> my husband's one of five, and oh. it's a big family. It's, it's so many different yeah. personalities, and like you got to find the balance. But it was just me and my sister, so I, I feel for you because. But you know, my dad would whoop our ass if we gave attitude, so we were too scared to get in trouble. Wait, so are you youngest, oldest, middle? What was I'm your... right in the middle. I have an older brother and an older sister that okay. are five or six years on gotcha. each side, okay. and then five or six years between me and my two younger sisters. And then I have a younger brother that's ten years younger. Gosh. There's so like 16 years between my oldest brother and my younger brother. I never so went to middle. a school building with any of my siblings. Whoa. The oldest ones were gone. I was, by the time I got from junior high to high school, they were, I mean, uh, they were always out of the building. That's yeah. crazy. So I was like an only child in the middle of this big family. That's how my really husband strange. felt because yeah. he's smack dab in the middle with two older, two younger, and yeah. he felt that way. And he was like, it was kind of nice because I wouldn't, you know, having to take care of all of them because the little ones didn't come along till a little, a little later. But yeah. yeah, middle child is a thing. It makes sense because yeah. the middle child, I feel like you have like this natural, balanced, like, I don't know, your energy just seems so balanced, which was, would make sense. Yeah, I was a big wallflower. I mean, not a wallflower. I was a big social butterfly. Mm -hmm. I knew I, I had friends in every little clique in the school. Uh, you know, I, I was I was quite fine being by myself. Yeah. Yes. I, I was okay being in my room playing my guitar and writing songs. Yes. I didn't have to have, I mean, I could go outside with a pack of firecrackers and some green army men and spend hours blowing up shit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was, I mean, but I, nothing really stressed me out. I was, I was a pretty happy kid. That's, That's great. Good. So let's go back to talking about, let's get back on the road and talk about music. What, uh, as y'all started traveling out there, what have been some of the obstacles as you transition in, into babies and all that stuff? I mean, what's your daily routine like? I mean, those are those are some challenges as female artists and mothers that you really have to overcome. Absolutely. I mean, are, are you are you finding? Do you take a nanny with you on the road? I mean, do you do you schedule activities? Look at zoos, different things that you can get to during the day. Yeah, yeah. I'm the rookie, so you. Can I was speak I was sort of the guinea pig. The thing was, Tracy Maddie was supposed to get pregnant before me because <laughs> she's like she's the baby whisperer, and I was like, I don't even know if I want kids. And then oh. I got pregnant. <laughs> and we made a little love baby. She, well, there you go. Well, I, don't, good thing. I don't want to say accident. They were having. She, Fun. Yeah, she's a little love baby. Um, but the first, we went on our headlining tour like four months after she was born. So technically with her adjusted age, she was only two months old. Yeah. And she went on the road and my husband was the tour daddy, as we said. <laughs> That's and what my husband's going to be this year, <laughs> yeah. tour daddy. Yeah. And it was challenging. It took me a really long time to accept that we would need outside help, child care, for example. Because mm -hmm. yep. my husband works full time as well. He's a songwriter and a producer in town. And... It was just like it was so much weight on both of us and like mm -hmm. we both have full time schedules. Um, but I will say the hardest part for me was this career was my baby since I was, you know, 14. I mean, really my whole life, all I've cared about is music. And it was like the weirdest transition to some nights I would just go on stage and have to accept that I could only give 30 percent because the other 70 was with my daughter. And it was just a really hard Thing to her 30% is my like 
hundred and twenty. So yeah. let's not. <laughs> but you know, you just, she's awesome. You just get to a point where you're like, okay, something's got to give from one of these aspects, and it's not going to be my family. So I just have yeah. to accept that maybe this is just a, that's a season of life. But there's I'm, so many demands on your time too. Yes, it, it's not a bad thing to get help. But but as yeah. far as just being an absentee parent, that's a whole different thing. Yes. But having somebody that your child gets comfortable with, I mean, we yes. we had to go through that process too. Yeah. Absolutely. And we're I'm in the struggle right now of like wanting to find help because I was a nanny kid. Like we had yeah. a nanny and we did way more with her than our parents, yeah. I would say. And um, like, God bless them. They're both working their butts off full time and stuff. But I just don't, you know, T is, it's a different balance with her and her nanny where like yeah. she is, she is a extension of Tea. And, and family assistant. In yes. Like yeah, exactly. A lot more yeah. Than yeah. Wash, so it's, wash yeah, it's not like, you know, Layton's when she's crying, she's not yeah. running to tea. You know, it's a very different yeah. situation yeah. than what it was for me. So I kind of have this little thing where I, you know, I'm too, it's just a whole thing I got to work through, but I'm just over here putting so much pressure. Like I have to do it all by myself and it's obviously not sustainable. So I'm, I'm still in the struggle of trying to figure out how to not do it all myself and I'll get there. And, and my wife's the same way. It yeah, is, yeah, it's and, and it took T what eight months mm-hmm. to h- hire a nanny, and like we'll probably get there. But I'm I'm she knows exactly how I'm feeling right well, now. You only have to kill two or three of them to find the right one. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. you ain't wrong. You, they you hurt my baby. I'm gonna hurt you. Oh <laughs> yes. man, it's oh. hard to trust somebody with yes, your your heart. Oh yeah, they yeah. lucked out. The first nanny they got, she is an angel like yeah. she like her gift from god is being with kids yeah. like and, and you have to find a really good nurturer oh yeah. and that's, she, that's what it's about. sometimes we have yes. to tell her live go take care of yourself you've been taking care of this baby all yeah. day like go do something yeah. for yourself and she's like what yeah. <laughs> i'm dying to ask this question come on <laughs> i know y'all love each other and you um you answer each other's questions and all that What's the biggest disagreement you ever had? <laughs> oh, biggest disagreement? You ever had a knockdown drag out? <laughs> We've never had a knockdown knock drag out. But both of us are not, we're not uh, yeah. confrontational. Like She's a Cancer. I'm a Virgo. So we are very sensitive. people pleaser. Energy. Yes. Yeah. So, but if there's ever like, if it's like, you hurt my feelings, like we just sit and I'm like, that really hurt my feelings. She's like, I understand. You know, it's and then very, we end up crying together. Yeah, and, and it's like yeah. it's very, that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. I know. <laughs> so I'm he and I, we're, we're both Aquarius. Yes. Aquarius, uh? Aquarius, Aquarians, Aquarians, Aquarians. Yeah. Aquarium. So what is that? That's better us? than equestrian. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if those are sensitive, what what what's the, what is an Aquarius? I don't know. I don't know much stuff. about Aquarius. We're the water bears. I will bears. say. Yeah. I think y'all we're are the first zodiac. Y'all are like the. The mm-hmm. strongest ones, oh, or something okay. like that, yeah. right? It's something like, oh, like that. middle of January through middle of February. I think that's yeah. right. But yeah, we've like we've definitely had like yeah. hard moments in our friendship, and like definitely. have to have hard conversations and all that. But I think through and through, like we we never let the other not feel heard. Yeah, you I'm know? trying to think. Like the the only main disagreements that we get into is like if there's a show offer, and I'm like. Well, I was supposed to be with oh. my family yeah. on vacation. And uh-huh. Maddie's like, but I really want to play this show. And I'm yeah. like, but I don't. Like, yeah. those are just real agree- disagreements yeah. that we have. Which is but so we normal. Always yeah. meet in the middle. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So so what's your song process as you go through and you write all these things, uh, getting that whittled down to those 10 or 12? Oh, is God. Is there, there ever there's some serious discussion? I'm sure We there's... had one on The Way It Feels where she oh, really yeah. wanted one song and I wanted another one. And she was right. <laughs> she was right, and she was right, um, and I'm glad that we didn't cut the one that I really wanted to I cut. I don't even remember that. It was the How's the Weather one. Oh, right. It was, like, okay. really yeah. spicy. It was too spicy for that record. Yeah, yeah. We're getting spicy now, but that record, it wasn't meant to be yeah, spicy. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, the one she picked, like, we still have in our set and everything. So, But it's never, like, uh, we just, we both do not tolerate disrespect at all, and I think, like, from top down, like the way we, you know, it's kind of like a marriage where it's like how the parents treat each other is how the kids are going to treat each other. And yeah. if it's like dysfunctional and like, uh, then the kids are not going to get along. And so it's like for us, we kind of like, you know, we make sure we're good and like we've communicated yeah. and then everyone around us isn't like walking on eggshells. Cause we've heard horror stories of duos like 
fighting and blah, and I'm just oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, more heck times no. that well, way than not. I know, and that's what I mean. Everyone asks that in interviews. They're like, come on now, like y'all Do really don't fight. Yeah, this isn't real, right? And we're yeah. like, no, it actually is. Like anyone yeah. who's around. So us, y'all haven't yeah. gone so far as to betroth your children to each other yet, have you? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> they are besties. Yeah, they are besties. What if they fall in love? You know, honestly, that would be so. Honestly, if you know she was my in law, I would be like, <laughs> oh, this yeah. is pretty great. We're like, we could plan a wedding together. Oh, it'd so be, yeah, because oh. I wouldn't do anything. <laughs> Tay would do all of it. <laughs> it would be so I would just sit there and pour the mimosas Woo! while she does all the stuff. Speaking of, do we need more? I oh, I'm no, I'm right. good. No, I'm good. I'm I'll totally good. I'll take Get more. it, girl. Yeah. yeah I like y'all, I'm, I'm it's such disrespectful. A... No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just such a lightweight now. Like There's still some in that one. I was having, I was in a foul mood yesterday just a horrible mood tell Nothing me all about it oh no it was just <laughs> just you know the seasons of life when god's cooking up good stuff and the devil's like jab 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 and you're like god <laughs> yeah so i was just having one of those days <clears throat> the baby's sick like just fussy you know the whole thing and i was like i'm about to go make me a jelly cheese dog <laughs> and it sometimes it you need me. that it made me feel a little bit better for him i ate like a bunch of junk yesterday amazing i felt terrible but i felt good in my soul and that <laughs> matters okay but i do comfort food <laughs> yeah what, what is your comfort food i'll oh, share mine with you if you share, share you yours go with first because i have so many <laughs> okay when I, I i i went to college for a couple of years and and i was we working. didn't even try so yeah. good on you <laughs> but i but i had no money i was dirt poor and everything so i, I would go to the store and i would buy a bag of potatoes and and I would buy the cheapest weenies that I could buy using oh, yeah. the red dive, and then you could get like cheap green English peas or something. Yeah. And I would I would boil the weenies because I'd boil all the dye out of them. Oh yeah. And That's then I would smart. make French fries, and then I would eat these you know, like five cans for a dollar or whatever they were back then. Wow. So I would eat boiled weenies and French fries and English peas, and still sometimes when I come home, that's all I want. Man. I still eat that to this day. Of course, I have turkey weenies now and lasur peas. And, yeah. You know, I have the higher quality of <laughs> stuff nowadays. Young, but that's just the weirdest stuff I've ever heard anybody. That's just a weird thing. That is a weird combo. <laughs> the but I kids like it. call it a uh, girl dinner girl these days, dinner. which basically it's like a smorgasbord of like random stuff that like seems disgusting, but it's comforting. So, I mean, I have a lot, but a classic is butter noodles <laughs> for me. Okay, um, I like because you, you could get like a thing of pasta for, you know, 50 cents at Kroger. Totally. Yeah, I mean, 10 years ago you could, but. But you'd go get some pasta. I mean, ramen noodles is still so comforting. Like, it just keeps you humble. You know, it's like, hey, you were broke. Don't get your britches but sometimes, all big. But sometimes you know? going back eating those things that you ate when you were poor. Yeah. I, I, it, I, reminds it brings you. comfort back to me. It's yeah. Really Same. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I was happy when I was broke. And I'm still happy. Yeah. It's like the money is just a little bit, you know. Have y'all ever had pickled okra? Oh, um, yes. yes. Right out of the jar. Yes. yes. I, take a little sip of the juice. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That... I'm like, my mouth is watering. So, so you, do you like okra in your gumbo? I love oh, yes. okra. I love okra in my I gumbo. I love it and so people, much. There's, there's people down in South Louisiana that, I mean, some people don't put okra. Do oh, you like God, beans, God, beans in your man. chili? Uh, I love beans in my chili. I love chili. beans in my chili, too. I think in Texas, that's you're not really thing. supposed to. Said, there's a, that's like but we, no go. we do be breaking that rule. I like beans in my I chili. I like beans in my chili. It's a nice little hearty. Oh but in, in Texas, it's like a whole discrepancy. Like there's Yeah, people no... will argue with you about this in Texas. Yeah. Them, you don't put beans in chili. What do they put in it, corn? No, they don't put anything. It's just meat and sauce. Oh, yeah. no, no. It, yeah, it's, no, no. it's like that, a thin we, tomato sauce. Yeah, I don't I don't like that. I think It needs to be zhuzhed up. It needs to be kind of fancy. I like onions and everything in it. Like yeah. I, my breath I like better it. stank after I eat chili. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> put some Fritos on that. Oh, Ooh. some Fritos. What's your comfort food? Well, pickled okra. That's all. that's all. And that's... then I like this is really bad, but I like tostita tostada pizza rolls. Oh, oh tostita, the, pizza rolls. the ones that burn the crap out of your yes. mouth. Tostinos. Like dog it. Tostinos. Tostinos. Yeah. I don't even yeah. set the timer on those bad boys. I just wait till they pop, <laughs> and then they start to like come out. I I'm like, oh, they're done. Ketchup, which Yum. makes no sense. Oh, no, that sounds man. good. Man, that I have so much comfort food. I mean, chocolate chip cookies, there's not much that that can't fit. I mean, yesterday I was in such a bad mood. My husband brought chocolate chip cookies, and I was still grumpy, and he's like, ooh, you're really going through it, because <laughs> most of the time, this is the trick. <laughs> we were just in Savannah, Georgia, on Saturday night with Raleigh and uh, I don't know if you've ever spent any time there I've been there many times but we went downtown and had sushi that day Ooh, there I are candy sushi. stores everywhere <gasps> they had gelato and all of them mm. they make these homemade <laughs> turtles I love turtles mm. I do too. with the chocolate and the pecans. peanut the, the pecans mm. but they had so much candy it was ridiculous truffle little chocolate truffles oh, oh, just I mean, so you walk in there it's like uh, uh, 
don't yeah. need to buy. I don't need to eat all this. So you have a sweet tooth. Just a little bit. See, My favorite is apple stuff. I love apple tarts yeah. and uh, turnovers and apple pies. He would pies. love Jonah's love, apple yes. crumble. My husband is like apples. basically like a home chef slash. I mean, he he. I call him the Jonah of all trades because he's like a contractor. He's a chef. He can bake his little tail off. Like he just does everything. Um, he gardens like all all this kind of stuff. So. But he makes this apple crumble that I'm gonna have to make for you, and I it's love like it. die for. Oh my! It's but you gotta have favorite. the Tillamook vanilla ice cream. Bean ice cream. You gotta have it. the right ice cream with it. Yeah. And her husband, I'm like, I still need to make him his dang apple crumble because Till- that Tillamook is that, that's a brand, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, now, have you ever had pistachio ice cream? No, I haven't. But, but I think know, I would like that. I think I would it, too. It, it's. Unbelievable how good it is. You wouldn't think it would be, but it's amazing. Yeah, ice cream yeah. is another comfort food. Like if I get Blue a little, Bell, you know, yeah. Bluebell makes a Dr Pepper ice cream now. What? And Dr Pepper's because my jam. Water Burger, Dr Pepper's Dr. my. Dr Pepper floats or Dr Pepper. You know what? My sister in law used Dr. to Dr. work James, for yeah. Water Burger, like corporate, and did all the merch and stuff. And she said that they switched the Dr Pepper shake for a banana something. I'm like, nobody needs more bananas. We need more Dr, <laughs> Dr. Pepper. And she said she went to the meeting and she fought for that Dr Pepper <gasps> shake, and they said no. What? Because, I don't know, something with the syrup was too expensive. I'm like, what? But you are robbing people of joy. <laughs> that is so sad. Oh, it was heartbreaking. And I asked her in three meetings. I was like, tell them. She's tell doing the Lord's work. And I was posting. I was, yeah. And they still said no. Mm. But I had a question. Okay, I do love me some Dr. Pepper. But yeah, I had a question for you. Um, no, no, it's nothing bad. But so you have been, how, how long have you been in this business? I got my record deal. I moved to Nashville in 1990. Okay. In September of 90. I got my deal in 91. Wow, I was that's 22. Fast. Yeah, seven months from the time I rolled it in town. And I didn't, I had, wow. first time I'd ever been here. Yeah. So it was, it was a pretty, pretty fast trip. That's amazing. Uh, and then uh, my first single came out in August of 91. And uh, Sticks and Stones was my first number one record. Wow. First one out of the box. Oh my gosh. Number one in January of 92. So you have seen, and, you know, for us, we're like, oh, Tracy Lawrence, freaking, you know, the biggest, you know, one of the biggest mm-hmm. country stars in our, you know, and favorite artists ever. Mm-hmm. But in your mind, there's probably been times when you were like, oh, I'm not supposed to be here or doubting if this was the career or maybe not. But my question for you would be like, how did you like push through those times of like doubt or like, you know, I don't know if you've had like slumps because in my mind, I'm oh, like, I did. hit song, hit song, hit song. But okay. you know, from the outside looking in, that's you know what we see. But like for you, were there moments? And if there were, how did you like shake it off and just keep going? You know, uh, a bad divorce. There, there have been things. I along didn't know the way. that. Oh didn't yeah, there have been either. bad things along the way that just knock the wind out of your sails. That, that yeah. make everybody back off from you, and the industry kind of pulls back, and labels kind of shelve you for a little while. I've seen the highs and lows of it all. Oh, that's it's, has to but, hurt. but you know what? I think it goes back to what we talked about earlier about always continuing to remember what it is and why you do this Absolutely. yeah, and, and remaining passionate about it. And sometimes you just got to put your head down and just keep going yes. Yes. because because you don't have anything else. You just yeah. put your head down and keep going. No, at some point you're going to pop out on the other side. Wow. It might be two years, it might be five. You just don't yeah. know. You just keep going. That wow. perseverance. Yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Your resilience and your perseverance is so impressive to me. Like, and, it, and you know, and you, I mean, you can say the same things about a lot of people people that have come through this business Absolutely. from health issues or whatever has gone on or, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. financial trouble. I mean, a lot of people go through financial problems too. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's, we deal with the same things that people don't realize that everybody in this business is struggling with a lot of the same things. Our life's just out there for everybody to see. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Mo money, mo problems, man. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> so but kind of. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it, it does add another dimension. And it, it brings does. a lot more problems along and, 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 and having employees and learning to deal with all that stuff. That's a yeah. huge learning and curve for a young person. Being a boss and like, I'm sure for you to, or I, I just, it, people in general, but for me, sometimes it's hard. Like when you're in, boss artist mode and then you come home and you're in parent mode and it's a little gentler of a hat that you're wearing at home than you are and sometimes I'm like oh I got my boss pants on we need to switch it and put on like the more gentle like you know calm like everything's good Hat. Well, I, I know I, I went through several years. I, I was I self managed myself from like ninety five all the way up to two thousand fourteen. Oh my! I mean, gosh. I had a staff of people. I've had offices downtown. I was running publishing companies, independent labels, the whole thing, and still doing hundred shows a year. Holy my wife crap. set me down. I would come home. My wife got on me one day. She said, "I don't work for you." 
and you've got to stop bringing this home. This wow. has got to stop because yeah. because there's got to be a balance here. She said, yep. I know you're under a lot of pressure. You're wearing a lot of hats, but you you got to change when you come home. Don't wow. bring that shit home. Yeah, no go and leave it in the hard, car. It's, it's a hard thing to, to find that balance. It's yeah. not easy. I try to yeah. be intentional. Like when I get home, like even today, when I get home, I will like check my phone, anything I need to respond to or emails or calls, like try to do that on the way home. So then when my car gets in that driveway, I leave it all in the car yeah. right you take there. Take a minute. And I go. Do you have a little switch that you flip in your brain to take yes. a minute? Yeah. Before you get out of the car? Yes. Yeah. And I just like take a little breath and then like, I don't know, like right when I walk into the house, I, I start feeling like, okay, I'm back to like my peaceful, like, you know, place of rest. So, so right. as you see your chicken. Oh my gosh. Yeah. When she comes and greets me, and then that cute baby, and I'm just like, okay, I'm good. I'm the fine. Switch is split. The yeah. Chicken, the chicken throws yeah. a switch. But I think that some people get maybe a little spinny if you don't have that uh, skill to switch. You know what I'm saying? Like, even like. And I, it's a learned skill. It's not. I it's mean, a choice. Yeah. Absolutely. It does not come naturally yeah. at all because naturally you want to come home and dump all your stresses on your partner, but your partner's like, wait, I've been waiting for you to get home, and I don't want the leftover. I want the I want you, you know, yeah. and it's like, how do you have enough to give to all these things? And it's back, you know, T's so good at protecting her energy. So when she goes home, she's like, I still have energy left in the tank. It is one of my spiritual gifts. Compartmentalizing. It, is. it, yeah. it always has been. And it was learned probably the hard way on radio yeah. tour. I remember I was like, OK, they're expecting me to show up bubbly and outgoing and talkative and that just is not me I mean I love to be friendly but I'm just a very like reserved person naturally mm -hmm. I'm a true introvert like that's just how I am I recharge on yeah. my own um, and I remember like radio tour there is no alone time yeah. and I just didn't protect my peace and mm -hmm. I ended up on antidepressants at 18 because I was just like I can't handle this yeah. um, and I learned the hard way like okay I can I can be who I am. I don't have to be anything I'm not for this industry. And if they don't like me, that's cool. Too but bad. If they yeah. do, that's great. Maddie likes me. That's pretty much yep. all I need. <laughs> um, and then when I'm home, I can just check out and be me. And my husband and I have a pretty firm boundary of like we don't talk about work because we both are in in the industry, yeah. which can be a little squirrely. But, I know and he's like writes basically half of our records with us and yeah. produces for we are us. Great, and great co-workers and partners and life but at partners. at home it's like yeah I mean we'll play each other music and that's fun but and we'll talk about work obviously if there's something on my heart or his but other than that we're just like do love you, us yeah. I, that, it sounds like y'all <laughs> have really healthy boundaries do you find writing songs to be almost like I, I found to be at times like if you have a co-write with one or two people, like it's going to a shrink or something, where you actually yes. are able to purge a lot of things out, I would, I would, I would struggle if I if I was, was writing with my wife a lot. I wouldn't feel like I would be able to share a lot of those things because you get in a room with a couple of people that you trust, yeah. And sometimes you talk about things to get to a hook line or get to a thought yes. that come from a deep place. It's almost like you're purging some things. I always feel like when I'm in writing mode and I'm doing that a lot, I'm I'm getting a lot of that stuff out of me that yes. needs to go somewhere. Yes. And naturally, like you're yes. not forcing it. Yeah, it's, what, just it's just coming out. It's just coming out. And, and I always, uh, I, once I, when you flesh a song out in three and a half, four hours or whatever long it takes and you've, and you've got it right where you want it and you walk away, I always feel this great sense of pride. Oh about my it. gosh. It's just yeah. so liberating to I, me. There yes. was a song on our last record, Through the Madness, I think it was on volume two called These Tears. Mm -hmm. and Perfect example. I, oh yeah. I went through, I did therapy for like about two years for like a specific life event thing that I needed or traumatic event that I needed to kind of untangle and heal and get to the root of yeah. that was causing all kinds of panic and whatever. And so I did a bunch of this work internally and, and I never thought I would like write a song about, and you know, I'm not being like, this is what happened, but just the feeling of the, the hook of the song is these tears should have been cried long ago. And it was all this stuff I was holding on to that needed, you know, to be left in the past. And man, I, in the writing session, I was getting teary. And then, but I was able to like write through the like, that like achy feeling in your stomach and that just where you're like croak in your throat and you're just like, yeah. I'm going to lose it. And I like kept it cool. But then when we went to go cut it, I was sobbing and we cut live vocals on that song. Like we did not touch them. We didn't tune them we just left them as it was and that's definitely one of my most like proud moments did you struggle the first time you performed it live 
we've never we've performed never it live. Performed. Those, I those think things that's going to, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping that doesn't happen because that might be hard. I do feel like I'm in a better place about all that. It was still real fresh at the time, but, um, but man, it was just this beautiful like moment that I feel like God gave me of like, Hey, this is, we're going to heal this. And then we're going to, you know, next chapter, like we're going to leave that yeah. where it's you at. You know, and as a songwriter too, uh, I had to learn over the years that everything doesn't have to be exactly like what the memory or the situation was that you lived yes. through. Yes. You yeah. can abstract. You can color it up. I mean, it's, it's you your You can protect prerog- yourself. You, you, you don't know? have to expose anybody else or yourself. You can still get the message across and get the colors and the textures and the smells and the flavors and all the things Absolutely. that you need in there to make it a very special piece without giving it away. Yes. And sometimes yeah. that makes it more special. Because yeah. oversharing is definitely a thing. and I think. And, but the public, whatever you put out there, that's what they believe is real yeah absolutely. Yeah, they don't know any different yeah. yeah and it was it was nice because like i mean t obviously knows all of my everything and so she was very like protective of me in that moment and i was very protective of protective of her when we were writing die from a broken heart because she was kind of in the same boat like two weeks prior she had just ended like a serious three-year relationship and it was gnarly and i would still love to punch the guy but i'm a christian so i can't um but you know I'm a maybe i'll friend. leave the faith for a day so i can get my knuckle sandwich in and then i'll um, <laughs> say 10 mar- hell marys and call yeah. you in the morning <laughs> <laughs> the Lord forgives. So, <laughs> but anyways, um, but that day, you know, our co-writer was like, "Hey, what about this? You know, hook?" And I was like, "God, this is so powerful." But I'm just looking at T, like, "Is this okay?" And she had to take a lot of bathroom breaks and, you know, try to, you know, like wipe the tears. But if we wrote it in such a raw moment in life and never thought it would see the light of day, and then, you know, it's just cool. Like in our story, the past, you know, almost 15 years of being in a duo, God has taken the ugliest, hardest, gnarliest situations and turned them into the most beautiful parts of our story. And so that's something that like, I just choose to have faith because he's done that so many times where I'm like, okay, surely if he's done that this many times, he ain't gonna stop doing it. You know, if I just choose to like, believe that even through the bad, um, you know, yeah, he's still good. So yeah. Have y'all done any European stuff yet? Yes. Early, early on in our career, we haven't been back to the UK in like oh my gosh so long so long too long like but we since love 2018 it. that market's or exploded over there yeah I mean, I and I haven't been back in quite a while we've done Australia yeah. done quite a few things over in Europe yeah, over yeah. the years but I really want to go over there and do some extensive stuff do y'all have Me plans too. to go back soon we want we to, want to. Um, we did Australia like really early on yeah. in our career and that was like Australia's magical awesome. yes. oh my gosh it was so cool and then we did a couple headlining tours out in the UK yeah um, the most reason i think was like 2017 or 18 so we mm-hmm. are definitely due for a uk trip it, it's magical out there because they love songwriting like it's different the crowds out there are different than here because they're just they're a little more like attentive to lyric i feel like like they are listening to the lyrics that you're singing out there which as songwriters just fills my cup you know yeah well, and all those places like like Switzerland is very different. I, we've gone over and played uh, these specialty parties. I, they mm-hmm. they have a different perspective of what they call mm-hmm. country and western. Yep. We played this big tent party over there in we Switzerland. We did that too. And, and they showed up in chaps and plastic yes! pop guns and yes! little toy cowboy hats. And it was it's like kind of weird. Moly. Yeah, it's a little. It's a little. It take you back uh, back a little bit. Oh, it's like yeah. Because they it, that's it's like a Halloween party it's for them. Like, I know. <laughs> it really yeah. is. We're like this ain't no Halloween. This is a two. <laughs> Tuesday at my house. <laughs> I couldn't get over the eggs. It's called Osfarts. <laughs> oh my god! That's all you got out of that. Well, it's like, well, I was like, there's a. Well, they some, do exit, you know. Somebody <laughs> named a town Osfart, and I was like, God, how big is this town? But it's like, oh, those are exits. Oh, okay. It's the all giantest right. fart you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> how many dates are y'all gonna do this year? Do you know? I think we're gonna try to get to like 70, 60, yeah, 60, 70, something like that. We've learned that, especially with having kids, like. Because we've done the like 200 dates and all that stuff yeah. in the beginning, and it's just not sustainable. Like, and we're still like at the point in, of our career, just trying to find a ways to 
I mean, make it a financially sustainable sense, yes. career. Yeah. Which, yeah. hence, changing management was a huge thing for us. You um, love them. Uh, oh, yeah. we already do. We yeah. like first Don't meeting. Talk about her, there she is. I yeah. know. <laughs> first meeting, we were like, I'm in love. Can we hire them now? No, you can't do it. We just literally yet, didn't want to have any other meetings, but, but we, we had to. Did. So we were like, we got to do our due diligence. It's a great team over there. Oh, I, it's I've so enjoyed great. Enjoyed being with them so much. It changed my life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Same, same. And um, but I think like for touring you know from the outside looking in it looks like oh they're rich and like we don't really make money from touring right now in our career and haven't for a while and so it's more of like investing in ourselves to then years to come we are like touring is super profitable for us but we're in this weird in between where it's like we're not a you know first of third act and we're we could be a direct support for some, but like we also can sell out a couple places. Like it's just like we don't really belong. Um, how much social media do you do? Are you posting all the time? I mean, I, I that's that's a world that I'm just not comfortable uh, in. I, well, I, I, I mean, I do this and we spread it around, but I don't post things. Same. Yeah, I think that was like a really unnatural thing for us. Even because y'all kind of grew up with it more than I did. We, we did, but in Instagram way. came out when we were in high school, so yeah. we're not like these kids that like you know we we had you know like the Nokia phones. Like we right. we saw like when the cell phones came out. Like yeah. we're this weird generation where we've seen the giant computers go to you know the phone and you know just stuff like that yeah. and it's so weird and like, it's weird I mean every day we're like okay we signed up to be artists not content creators or content yeah. creators but that's a so whole much, job it's there's a so much to job. it now though and a lot of labels won't even look at a new actor if they don't have a million followers because exactly. they don't have to do any of the work and, and that's <laughs> That's, and that's just the dang truth. I mean, yes, it is. you release a song, and I know every artist feels this right now. You release a song, and it's you wait for it to go viral on TikTok, and then you can put it out as a single. And that's just like it hasn't happened for us. Yeah. So we're just like, which okay. is real yeah. funny because the label for us at least they really want us to push our music on TikTok and like, hey, get this song to go viral. And we're like, okay, we're gonna try and do the videos. But Universal and TikTok are in this like standoff right oh, yeah. now it's where none off. of our music is on TikTok. So I'm like, hold up. So y'all having some issues, but you want me to blow up the music on this platform, but y'all like what is happening? So it's just a whole mess and don't eat like we're I mean, just keeping our head down, like you yeah. said. Like Keep we're just but this is I was on Universal for about that long and it was an awful experience. For yeah, me. I think it's like hit or miss for some people. We've been really blessed while we've been there, like we've had some big champions. Yeah. And yeah. I think if it weren't for those big champions that really fight for us, it would be a different experience. But you know, everyone's so different because like some people we came from Big Machine and we had a handful of people that we loved there, but we did not belong in that environment. The the way that they run things there is not how we well, and I know some vibe. of that because I was on DreamWorks and oh, Scott yeah. was the head right. of promotions on yeah. DreamWorks. Yeah. And so that it was great while we were doing that, but then DreamWorks merged back into Universal. Yeah. And they and there was a whole lot of shuffle there. It got pretty ugly. I yeah. mean, I, I I left one meeting going, call the lawyers. I'm getting off this lawyer. Oh, it yeah. Good for you. It yeah. So for bad. You. yeah. It's yeah. just you know, it's just different strokes for different folks, but we just did not belong there long term. And you know, who knows? Like you know, we love we love our team at Universal, but you know we've been in this business. You can you know it, it can really, change real fast. It can change real fast, but there's such a balance between having to have a presence on social media because it does affect your everything that you do. And it's such a bummer because it's, it's just, a, a yeah. whole other job. It's just you know? all about staying relevant, and it's like yeah. and that messes with your head a little bit too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Just and I don't know. It's got to be awful. I know my my kids struggle with it growing up in this day and age where. You're so worried about how many likes you're getting or how many followers you're sustaining and making yeah. sure you post enough. It causes a lot of mental health problems. Yeah, it does. but it really like does. you said, it's not real. Like no, just like the real. music business, social media is not real. Nothing is real about it. And so it's like the way that I've been able to kind of have peace about it is like, unfortunately, like this sounds so icky, but like we are the product that we are selling. And in order to sell this product, I need to engage this platform or partner and so i've been trying to make it a little more like business feeling your and canopies and you just got to market your brand yeah exact and so it's just like that's what we're we're doing and so i mean and there is time on social media where i like to where we share like about being moms or like you know just trying to make other 
young women feel good about themselves or, you know, just post positive things. And that's got to be frustrating in the climate out there right now where everything is so upside down in society and oh, and yeah. men are being demasculated and women yes. are being made to feel guilty about being feminine and yes. all of Oh, my gosh, yeah. It's so upside down. It doesn't matter what you share. There will be it's backlash. wrong to somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody's going to get their feelings hurt about it. That's why I don't even look at all that. Matters. I know. So it's interesting because, I mean, we came out with Girl in a Country Song, which is like this feminist anthem. Very controversial. Yes. <laughs> but I still love to cook for my husband. I still love to clean my house. I still love to do those, I guess, domestic woman things and it's not something that I'm ashamed of but society right now is like oh you can't be a strong feminist and do that why not I, I don't know I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand I don't, none of it makes sense no. I think and it's, it's all almost beautiful. it doesn't it's almost to the point that it doesn't matter what you do you, you exactly so just do whatever the hell you want all because everyone's gonna be just, mad they're, they're marketing tools right there are ways to reach an audience out there and hopefully you can continue to grow that base and, yeah. and find more people that are like you that, that kind yeah. of dig who you are exactly. without changing who you are and that's one thing that we've just like we refuse to diminish our artistic integrity and like our integrity as humans like we were there's definitely been times where it's like oh you know like in the past we've been told like oh y'all are boring like you're not controversial enough like you know you're not you you're know not dressing skimpy enough yes, you're not doing this you're exactly not doing that. and it's like well if that's what i have to do to get it i don't want it yeah. Yeah. If I have to change who I am, if we have to change who we've been this whole time to get it, then we don't want it. I do you know? think that's what's beautiful about like this podcast and, yes. and the new age of technology and social media. Like, There's definitely ways that we've tried to find ways to be more authentic to us, but also like staying in the social world, Absolutely. you know, yeah. like podcasts, we definitely want to eventually start one, show our personalities more. Yeah. But it's, it's been very things... healthy for me uh, because I, I wasn't, yeah. I'm not one of these people that post stuff all the time. And I but need, this is a but perfect I, way. But yes. I needed, I needed this. Exactly. I, I'll share one more thing with you. We'll start winding down. I, uh, my wife and I watched this new Johnny Cash uh, movie last night Ooh. and it was about his life. And there was so much, Marty Stewart narrated it. Y'all, have y'all seen this thing? Was what on, is like, it Showtime? on? It's on Showtime? Like, it's like a Showtime or HBO or something. Okay. It, was, it was on like direct TV at the yeah, house. Yeah. But it went through his whole journey about how uh, when he had his meltdown, he grew up very, very spiritual in a very Christian home. And he had a place up in Chattanooga and he had a, a cave on his property called Nickajack Cave. And he he decided that he was done. He was been burnt out on pills and all this stuff. And he took a flashlight and he walked into Nickajack Cave and he wow. went as far as he could. The battery went dead on it and he laid down and waited to die. And when he woke up, he crawled out and he made peace with God. And he went through this whole process. And then it went through his journey about how as he was detoxing and everything, how, how June was there and went through the whole process with him. And then he became friends with Billy Graham and oh. just his whole spiritual journey through oh, all this stuff. Chills. How the labels dropped him because he started doing Billy Graham uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, revivals. the revivals and things. And, and he had so many people that turned on him and just how difficult it was and he just had so much conviction in his faith after he went through all that wow. that he didn't care what the label said I mean he Absolutely. got dropped from Columbia wow. over his over his faith and, and what, what he was doing and what dumbasses they are you dropped Johnny Cash they what drop idiot Johnny Cash. Yeah. yeah and then he went from being one of the most respected best played artists they loved him when he was a train wreck mm -hmm. uh, they canceled his show because of all of it so, <gasps> all, so you don't realize that all the things that you struggle with that's why I like watching these things everybody's yeah. got a story everybody's Absolutely. It's got something to share. Yes. And this is not a bed of roses that any of us are walking no. through. Absolutely. But to see what he went through and how long he lived and to see the class that he had there at the end and just some of the last music that he made was pretty freaking powerful. I mean, wow. and not So it's the times. journey. Yeah. It's the journey. Yes. We're, we're not yeah. running a race here. This is a, this is a slow yeah. process. And there's so much medicine. along the way to, that you can do and achieve and that you can inspire somebody yeah. with. Yeah. There's, it's amazing what you could accomplish in the journey if you just don't lose sight of what yeah. it is you're about as a human being. Have, and, you, and you just take the ride. And the like, redemption not of an American yeah, Is that icon. the one, Tracy? Okay, cool. I just want to make sure it's That's right. it right there. I cool. can't oh, wait to watch it. it I want to watch it. absolutely that. amazing. Not to be a weirdo, but I feel like find out who your friends are. Like that song embodies... Yeah. That was very redemptive for me too. Yeah. Because was, I'm yeah, sure you had those moments where... Oh, yeah. 
you know, oh, I'm so, I'm on top of the world and everyone loves me. And then you, but what did my papa used to say? He'd say, it's a short walk from the mansion to the shit house. <laughs> 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 and it's true. Like it there's times in life when you yeah, are like up in the clouds and then there's times and you find out who really has your back. And, you really and we are so grateful that we have each other, but also like the, the champions that we do have like around us because man, this business, I understand why people get like hooked on drugs or alcoholics. I well, get it's all it. around us. And oh, we, I, I mean, we've yeah. been through our ups and downs yep. with all of us. Just, yep. I've, I've, I've had my struggles. Absolutely. Yeah. And we it. all have, yeah. we all have, like we have all had our, our moments. And but, but you know, I've met some amazing people, you know, I've, I've I've had a chance to go to the White House a couple of times. I met oh, athletes. we did that last so what's year. What's some of the coolest amazing. people that you've met along your journey so far? Uh, we met Oprah. Once. Oh, did my you really? gosh. That, that was, was so cool. Uh, Dolly. I talked to Dolly, and she was like, oh, I love you girls. And I was like, don't say that. I'm going to die. Like, I'm just <laughs> freaking out. Um, you're definitely up there on the list because I grew up just – like worshiping all of your records and all of your songwriting. Um, man, there's a lot. Um, George Strait. George Strait. Oh, I about passed out. I mean, I'm from Texas, He's so. Still, I still get overwhelmed around Strait. Oh, even after, man. Because he was my guy. Oh, yeah, yeah yes, absolutely. Yeah. And then Alan Jackson, I freaked out. I think the number one freak out for me was Leanne Walmack because she is our she's an hero. Like she's, God. I wanted to be her. Like five years old watching I Hope You Dance music video over and over. And, you know, back when you had to wait and like watch it when it came on yeah. CMT or GAC or whatever. And I would just wait until it was on the countdown. And when we met her, I was freaking out. What a great voice. Oh, she's man. had some amazing, amazing records over the years. Yeah, yes. yeah. We've definitely yes. met like some really cool, like big, giant, famous people, but the most impactful ones. Ones, the ones we've you yeah. know mentioned, um, the White House was so crazy, man. I had some conspiracies about it's that wild. place. <laughs> did, you, did you get to go on like a tour and all the? Different no, things? I went in with some Secret Service people that we know. Okay. With. They, that, so I didn't get to go up to the residential part of it, but we went around through the West Wing and through all that stuff. And it was actually when Clinton was in the White House, and I got <gasps> they got to go down to the bowling alley and they I sniffed. Che- alley? There's a bowling alley in the basement. Whoa. I sniffed Chelsea's shoes. Oh my god! Wasn't too bad. <laughs> we met the Bidens, and it was it was wild. Yeah. And then we oh, this was weird. That we did the White House thing. Um, oh, in December yes. for the National Tree Lighting. Joe Walsh is like one of our best yes. friends now, and I'm like, how cool is that? Joe, so cool. effing Joe Walsh. Walsh. Yes. Oh, like. Oh my gosh, and he loved us. And I was like, yeah. Don't love me. You're freaking me out. You're too cool. Like, get out of here. Oh There's my another gosh. guy that finally got out of his own way. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. And his yeah. journey's been pretty fascinating. He's very yeah. inspiring. Yeah. Yes. He's like sober. And those and, and those yeah. are those are the people that you run across that you can learn great life lessons from. And we did. Oh, yeah. we you know did. what he said? <laughs> I was asking him because we were in the moment of like real defeat in December and I was going through postpartum. It was just like a crap storm of stuff yeah. and he I said Mr. Walsh like did you ever have it? he's like call me Joe I'm like I'm not calling you Joe Mr. Walsh <laughs> um, did you ever have moments of like defeat kind of the same question I asked you and he's like oh absolutely but you just like you just got to push through it and he's like um, you know and whenever the record label is giving you trouble he's like I just walk into the record label and I just go and walk out <laughs> I'm not kidding That's what, isn't that what he said man of few words and his wife and his wife said he actually he does, does that, that and it's very embarrassing and he just we've yet to try it out obviously know, but yeah, which luckily our, our, we have good people at our at our mm. label that love us and would laugh if we did that but um, but yeah he was like if anyone's ever giving you trouble in this business you just go and walk out and I was like okay Mr. Walsh okay yes sir you got so, it so I had a gun yeah, drawn on me at the White House once no. Oh. Really? I'm surely it was somebody. That oh, did you bring oh, in his bill oh, the tea? It's, it's, Would you have really, something to smoke in your no, pocket? No, it's nowhere. <laughs> near, oh, it's nowhere near as bad as it sounds. But uh, so oh I was playing God. for this guy named Stephen Cochran, and we got up there. And, uh, we got the tour of the White House and see all the rooms, and everything. So you're supposed to have your cell phone off. Well, I did, but as soon as we got out there on the porch, I reached my pocket and turned my phone on, and this guy, one of the Secret Service dudes, or whatever, pulls his damn machine gun <gasps> up, got the helmet on, and everything, and, sir. 
put your phone back in your pocket. Like, God, oh, I would have. Oh my yeah. gosh. So then Stevie you was. Can, you can you can like set off bombs with those things. What? Apparently, but then Stevie yes, was. Yes, that's that's why. I mean, you can you could trigger a bomb with your cell phone. Well, Stevie was up in be. front of us all, and he he turns around. And he's like, "That's got to be one of my guys." And turns around, of course, it was me. You know. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Over his cell phone. So I put my BlackBerry curve back in my pocket. You know? yeah. Man, they were trying to get us drunk at the White House. We went for the Christmas tree lighting, and they literally had like a champagne guy assigned to each guest. You would take like one sip. One sip. And More like, champagne. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm, and mind you, my baby's two months and so, and I'm breastfeeding. I'm like, I can't, you know, be like getting turnt at the White House. And turnt. I'm like, you know. <laughs> I'm going to get turnt. And then I'm not going to be like, hey, Dr. Biden, <laughs> hey, President. You know, I don't want to be that. But he's, I mean, they filled our glasses yeah. up like seven times. I'm like, T. We would enjoy that. Oh <laughs> my gosh. I definitely had to get a little good buzz going. Oh, for, for sure. sure. And then by the time, I mean, we had to wait like an hour and a half till the president and uh, the first lady like made it into the room because you know it's like the all secret and all the crazy stuff and oh I would never want to be the president ever. He's working on it. He's got a brilliant question. I know you got something well, brilliant. I, it's, did you say you drove from from Dallas to Nashville a lot? Yes. Oh yeah, oh Wait, yeah. How old were y'all when you did that? 15, did, and did you, did you drive 16. together? So uh, we didn't have our licenses yet, so our parents had to drive ah, us. Okay. Bless them. But once I got my permit, my dad was like. You're taking a shift. So, um, yeah, we would drive like either we would stay at Tay's house in yeah. Oklahoma. We'd like take weeks off and stay at each other's houses. And then okay. that set of parents would take us to Nashville and then yeah. she'd come to my house and then yeah. our parents would, you know. So, he's from Waco. Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh my gosh. Wow. What the a home of Dr. Pepper. Oh Whoa. my gosh. I love me some Dr. Pepper. Mm -hmm. DP. That's one of my comfort foods, if Not that too. counts. That's my oh. initials. Yeah, I, oh I, my I, gosh. <laughs> my initials are MF since I got. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's very fitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was like, ooh, I feel a little more badass now. <laughs> well, oh ladies, I have sure enjoyed myself today. Oh, We've been I talking know. for a long time. I, this I, has, this has filled my cup. Speaking Thank of you. things that fill your soul in your cup, like this is, and so when we start our pad, podcast, you're going to be I one of be our guests. I absolutely honored. Yeah. Oh, I just, Please. you have so much just like wisdom and wonderful things. Yeah, that, all that. yeah I've learned a lot from falling down a bunch. Oh, but that's the thing is like <laughs> we get the luxury of being the sponges where yeah. we get to learn from some of the most brilliant people. So uh, anything that we haven't talked about that you want to get off your chest or tell us about where your tour is going to be or any um, any information or stuff? Well, if anyone's got any chickens, I probably need some more. Maybe that would be a nice <laughs> gift to start giving our guests. We get some baby chickens. Yes, yeah, chickens. A giveaway oh, of chickens. Yeah. Yeah. Luna needs some and friends. Here's your chicken. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Una, Luna, and Tuna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's perfect. But thank you so This has been such a joy. Thank like, you, we've just had the best time. Thank you. Thank I know. You. Thank Hope we you. can do it. Now, now, when we see each other at our festivals and stuff, we've got a relationship where we I say know. hello to each other. Oh, and yeah. So nice. And I'll try yeah. to keep some mimosas. Around. Oh my <laughs> gosh, no, we will bring you the yeah. mimosas next our turn. Time. Yeah, our, our turn. turn to host. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Maddie Tay. Yay! Thank, Thank you. you.